Hey, I'm Mr. Carboni. I'm your calculus teacher this year. I wanted to talk a little bit about the class, how COVID is going to affect things and what we will be doing in here. Before we get into it, let's talk about the Hoover City Schools COVID plans, just so we all understand what the different levels are. Uh, level one is traditional school with no changes whatsoever. Level two is mostly traditional if you choose to attend school, but you do have an option to be a full-time virtual student. Level three is what we are doing to start this year. Uh, go, go to school two days a week, virtual three days, or you could be a full-time virtual. And level four is where we finished last school year. That is, uh, everyone is full-time virtual. So some of the different colored text in this presentation, there are three different colors. If anything is in black, that means it will apply to anything this year, regardless of whether we are in a COVID-adjusted situation or traditional school. Everything blue are the will be the adjustments for uh, any time that we are in a COVID adjusted schedule. So anytime we have full-time virtual students is what the blue would represent. And red is stuff that will apply only in traditional schools. So since we're not gonna be in traditional school anytime soon, I'm really not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna skip that. And if we get back to traditional uh, in this year, then I will talk about how we will handle school or calculus then. So what is calculus? And how is this class different than previous math classes? So the easiest way to describe calculus is that it is the study of change. It allows you to look at things as things move and flow, which is a little bit more realistic because um, if you're in a car traveling somewhere, you're not always going 60 miles an hour. You're going to speed up and slow down. You're getting traffic jams. Calculus allows you to study that trip as your velocity changes. And that's just one example. But that's kind of what calculus is. We'll be looking at things as they change. Um, unlike pre-calculus, where you have a lot of disjointed chapters that a lot of times don't really flow, calculus really flows really well. So when you finish a unit, say unit three, when we finish unit three and start unit four, you're probably not even going to realize that we have moved to a different unit, except that we'll have a test between them. So uh, the, the material at the beginning of unit four is where we dropped off at the end of unit three. And same thing when we go from four to five, everything just moves very, very nicely. One of the benefits to that is that we are in a constant state of review. Whoops, we are in a constant state of review all year. So when we get to semester exams, if we get to have a semester exam, it's gonna be easy to study for compared to other classes because you won't have to go back to previous months to study because everything we do will always be used as we move through the course. The downside to that is if you slack and you don't learn something in say September or October, then that's gonna come back to haunt you for the entire year. So uh, you don't have that ability, kind of like in pre-calculus, if you really did poorly on one test, you could kind of turn over a new leaf and study hard and do better on the next test. Can't really do that in calculus. So if you really do poorly on one test and you want to do better on the next one, then you also have to go back and, and master those skills that you didn't get on the previous unit. So, so you really have to stay up on top of things. Um, you don't want to get behind the eight ball because it's not easy to recover. Okay, so my web page. Uh, and I'm about to go to my web page and show you these things. I'm not talking about Google Classroom, which is where I'm also going to be posting some things. But my web page, there's a calendar, course documents, and shared Google Drive folders. So let's look at my web page really quick. If you go to the Spain Park web page, you can see, uh, go to faculty, staff, math, and here is my website. The first page it takes you to is, um, it's got links to the course uh, syllabus, uh, some rules, some formula sheets that may come in handy. And if you go to calendars, and let's look at regular calculus. And let me go back to a year that I have a lot of things posted. So February, let's go back to February. Everything I do will always be posted on my calendar. We could even go back to like 2015 if you wanted. But everything's always going to be here. And if you look at any one day, you can click on it and it'll say, okay, here's what we did. There will be PDF links to everything we do with the exception of quizzes, which those are going to be online. We'll talk about those later. Um, homework is going to be posted. So everything will be right here in the calendar. And if you click on documents, this is the other part of my web page I want to show you really quick. These links right here take you to shared Google Drive folders. It does not take you to the documents themselves. Um, the two that you'll be most interested in are the calculus textbook scans. If you click on that, it will open up a folder. And let's say we wanted to look at section 2.3. What is that? Here's 2.3, product and quotient rules. And if I double click that, you will see that it is a PDF version of the textbook. It has all the introductory material and towards the end, you will see the problems. Now, what you're, you may be thinking, uh, it doesn't have the back of the book. How can I check the odd problems? 
Well, if you go to my webpage, right here next to calculus textbook scans, you will see answers to odd problems. So you can click on that. And here are the odd answers right there. So you can find your odd answers. The other one is class notes. You may have noticed on my calendar. Let me go back to my calendar real quick. Whoops. On my calendar, you may notice that at the bottom of each day, it says class notes. And if you click on that, everything I do in class, I save as a PDF, everything I write on the screen. So you can go here and you can find the class notes. If you're in fifth period, you can just scroll down to fifth period. There's a four, where's my five? There it is. So here's where fifth period begins. And this is everything I wrote that we did in class that day. There is sixth period. So class notes will be in that folder. Um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, I'm sorry, they'll be on the calendar, but also if you go to my documents, you'll see class notes right here. There will be occasions where I forget or I don't have time to actually post a link to the notes in Google Classroom or on my calendar, but I will save them. And the instant I save them on my computer, they go to this folder, the class notes folder, and you may have to change the way it's sorted. I think it sorts by oldest first. Yep, let me resort this. And I do year, month, day. That's the best way to keep things chronological. Um, and here is, I don't know why that one's there. That doesn't need to be there. Um, March 13th, 2020, that is the last day of school that we were actually in the building last year. So you can see my notes and they were saved. And so my notes will always be there waiting for you. And I spent too much time talking about my web, my web page. Let's go back to this. Let's go present and move on. And let's talk about other parts of the class. Let's see. Okay, materials needed. Traditionally, I tell my students to get a large binder because I do hand out a ton of things. However, this year, everything will be uh, everything will be digital until we get back to traditional school. So you may not need as big a binder, but you will need paper. Uh, it is so much easier to do math on paper. Please don't try to type your paper, your paper. Don't try to type your math work. Um, if you wanna work with like a stylus on an iPad or something like that, that's fine. But I do want written work in some form, not typed work. Um, so just uh, maybe get a binder. If you want to print everything, all the PDFs and stuff, then, then you definitely will need a binder or something large to, to hold it all. Uh, calculators we use in class on a non-traditional year, we'll use scientific calculators, of course. Uh, during COVID, you'll have your Chromebooks. So you can use whatever you find on the internet. We'll talk about that later. Grading policy. I am one of the few, if not the only math teacher who does grades by total points. I don't do categories. So all of your points go into one big bucket. And at the end of the nine weeks, we divide total points accumulated by points possible to get your final grade. Uh, the assignment types will be classwork, homework, quick quizzes, and unit tests. And so classwork and homework, you know what classwork and homework are. I'm going to skip that because uh, under the COVID situation, classwork and homework are really just going to be the same thing. They're just going to be assignments that are posted, and you just have to do them. They have to be turned in. Um, they're due by midnight of the day that they are assigned. Friday assignments are due by midnight on Sunday. If you turn it in late, if for a classwork homework type assignment, if you turn it in late, you get a 25% penalty for each day that it's late. So one day late, 25 off, two days late, 50% off, three days late, 75% off, four days late, you can turn it in, but I'm taking all 100% off. So don't turn it in on the fourth day unless you just want to show me that you did do it. Uh, no optional assignments during COVID scheduling. That may sound weird that I've listed that, but traditionally, I don't make your homework assignments required. They're optional assignments. But under the COVID situation, I do want everything completed, and you will receive a zero if you don't turn it in. Um, all assignments must be turned in digitally. We will not be doing any paper and pencil, or, or, or at least you're not turning it in. You may work on paper, but you need to take a picture of it or scan it as a PDF and upload it in Google Classroom. Okay, so we will have quick quizzes. These are just your normal quizzes. They'll have problems similar to what we do in class. They're not very long. I try not to make them real cumbersome. They're worth 25 to 50 points. Under COVID, your quizzes will essentially be normal assignments. However, they will be timed. So once you open it, make sure you have enough time to complete it. So it's not gonna be something you can open it, close it, come back to it later. I'm probably gonna give you 20 or 25 minutes to complete it. So make sure you have time to finish it. And while you can use your notes and the internet, I do want you to complete all quizzes and tests. And I'll talk about this on the next page. Uh, I want you to do them completely independently, no help from other people. Uh, now that's something I'm just gonna have to trust you to do. That's gonna be on the honor system. And so please, please do that. I would appreciate it. Um, so tests, 
let's see, test will be worth around 125 points and that can change depending on the difficulty of the material. Um, now under COVID, I'm not really sure how I am going to do the test. This is the thing I'm most anxious about. Uh, we'll kind of figure it out. We have a long ways to go before our first test. Uh, quizzes, uh, like quizzes, they're open notes and open internet. I do want you to do them independently. And I'm gonna try to find a website where I can use a test generator that could crank out a whole lot of different versions of the test to minimize collaboration with other people. Um, and that doesn't even need to be the don't worry about the scaling formula that is uh, left over from my AP classes. Doesn't apply to you, sorry about that. Okay, additional COVID notes. On Wednesdays, I will try, if I can, to have a virtual session on Google Meet, one for fifth period and one for sixth period during our normal class times. Uh, that said, I do have two daughters who will be with me in my classroom on Wednesday, and I don't know what their responsibilities, my responsibility as a father, will be and how that's gonna work out. So if nothing else, I will have just one. I'll have just one. I see one's in the classroom with me right now. Stay over there, Eva. Seriously? <laughs> Okay, my daughter just snuck behind me, so I had to cut the video feed. And uh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I will try to have a Google Meet session for each class on Wednesdays. But if I can't, I will schedule one for both calculus classes, and I'll send information about that later. If the school's bandwidth will handle it, I will live stream every class on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, more information for that will be coming out later. Due dates, remember that things are due by midnight on the day they are assigned or midnight Sunday night if it's a Friday assignment. So if I, if you have, a, uh, say, a 30-minute quiz, don't start a 30-minute quiz. I'll have to say the test here. Don't start a 30-minute quiz with 15 minutes to go. Don't start a 90-minute test at 11.15 p.m. because you're not giving yourself full time to complete that test. So the Google Meet details, let's talk about what's expected. Uh, links to the Google Meets will be sent out on the day of the meetings. Joining Google Meets is not mandatory, but if you can fit it in your schedule, if you're at home and you can join us, you really should. It'll be helpful for you as far as learning the material and, and keeping up to date on things. Keep your microphone muted at all times, unless you have to ask a question, then you can unmute and just say, hey, Carboni, I have a question and ask your question. Or if you want, you can type it in the chat. You do not have to turn on your camera. I think some teachers are requiring you to turn on your cameras, but I'm not gonna make you do that. I would like for you to, especially early in the year while I'm still trying to figure out who you are, what you look like and all this stuff. Uh, if you do have to ask a question, if you have to ask a question, please uh, turn on your camera so I can kind of see you as you're asking because a lot of, a lot of communication is nonverbal. It'll help me out. Google meetings are always recorded and they will be uploaded on YouTube for later viewing for those of you who are unable to join us. Uh, so with that in mind, wear appropriate clothes, watch your language, don't do anything silly that you don't want to get in trouble for. And that is everything. If you have any questions, shoot me an email.